Hi everybody, my name is Aurora and I would like to share with you something that's been on my mind for a while now and it has to do with the way that we look at things and how we respond to it and in what observational way that we do and the way that we look at things that there's an energy connected to it and this energy is either it's draining us or it's assisting us um, and I'd like to explain that in order for us to embrace our full potential and that we that we empower ourselves that we actually take a look at how we look at things at how we observe things do we observe things in a wounded manner or do we observe things in a whole healed manner because of the way that we look at things and the way that we experience the way that we look at it in in the wounded manner that determines that we experience things in a wounded manner reflecting back at us and in the same way when we look at things that we are experiencing things in a whole manner that we will experience whole things so I'm hoping that I will be able to breach the specific subject because it is rather a very deep, intense subject. Um, but again, um, please drop your questions uh, below and uh, with regard to this specific subject. And um, let's all think about this together and kind of work on this in, in the way that we have been working on it to help ourselves go further forward. In terms of, I'm not saying up, I'm saying going further forward. Knowledge is what is necessary for us to use no matter where we're going and how, how we are experiencing things for ourselves. So I am approaching the subject called duality because it's been there on and off and on and off and it's not really been I mean it's been discussed in the ways that it, ha it has been but um, I would like to just add something else to it just so that we can actually have a look at that because I still see duality around us I still hear it I still experience it whether it's my choice or not it is kind of just around us I'm sure that you feel the same way um, when you look at what duality is and you kind of look at it with with fresher fresh eyes um, it's also the way that people look at things okay um, dualistic manner in how reality is viewed and how reactions are perceived needs discernment in how you look at yourself Shift from looking outward with your eyes to how you view yourself. How do you see and feel about you? And how do you influence your surroundings? And if you think about it, what do you see? What do you actually feel? But you need to be careful how you project certain perceptions of what you know. So if I look at this room and it's dark, is my perception going to tell me that there should be a light switch on that side of the wall just because of logical assumption that it is, when in actual fact it may not be? And so projecting in that way is what I'm explaining and what I'm sharing. So you have to be slow to assume. These forms of or streams of energy can envelop another view into that stream. I'm calling it a stream of perception or a stream of consciousness. It's the way that you look at something that creates a stream of consciousness or perception. So observe two streams of sight, the truth itself and the perceived view of it. In this way, it's similar to creation. We're thinking and setting this thought into intention and so on and then having to observe the creation by turning over and looking at what you've done 
That's all you know you've created, right? We can only do these things in a stepwise fashion. So now when you look at in a dualistic manner in the same way. So in other words, if you've got uh, the idea or the concept about good versus evil, light versus dark, etc. As long as you think in this way, as well, as long as we think in this particular way, we perceive this. We live in this and we create in that stream. And in this, we project outward our fears because we lose touch with ourselves, our hearts. So we create, a, put ourselves in a dualistic way. So if I'm in a dualistic mind and I look ahead at something and my idea is, okay, that must be evil. Then I have just put myself, I've removed myself away from myself by entertaining that thought of evil. And what is evil other than something that is related to fear? Okay, this is a metaphorical discussion and it is really about how we are looking at things and it is also an observation and my opinion that I'm sharing with you. Okay. This does not mean that we walk with blindfolds or perceptions that, that I'm, I'm even negate, I'm, I'm not even promoting that idea that we have to keep our eyes shut so we don't look at anything and just be locked up in a room. I'm not saying that at all. On the contrary, it's, it is suggested that we work deeply on ourselves to become aware that the other view is a whole view, that we are unique whole beings each one having a profound effect on your immediate world and surroundings, your personal world. You're a celestial being of consciousness, celestial meaning something that is aware of many things that is above, that you're bringing it into action. So I'm talking thoughts, okay? Not out there speaking thoughts. They where the wings are, the upper heavens, Celestial beings are in the heavens. The heavens are your thoughts, okay? Or there. You are also the source of this world. The heavens, the middle earth, and the lower earth. This is your earth. You are a celestial being of this universe. Okay, and you are experiencing this path through this as a tool or an avatar, something that is there out of care that you are living inside. It has a personality, it has a soul, and it is a mind, and it's got intelligence. And you are using it, but you are infinite consciousness. So if all of this falls down, you are still there. Okay, so I'm just trying to give you some ideas on how you will still have what you are thinking about. You are not your physical body. You are not, pers you are not your personality. You are using these tools to work through the system until you can find your way back, should you choose to. Um, and you are living on a within a celestial being, which is the earth, as well. So all things are alive around you. So now, it would be good to think about the fact that you are unique and authentic, that you actually choose that particular process of being, because it is a whole existence, um, that you are transparent in your truth, that you are conscious and consciousness, but that you need to be aware that in the way that you look at all things around you, that you do not get overwhelmed 
in the reaction that that particular drama requires from you. Because in that way, you remove yourself one step away. You step further away from yourself. Okay, this does not mean that I am saying, again, don't become involved. If you if you are needed to help, then help. It is the preservation of a healer, is what I'm trying to explain to you. Adapt that aspect. Heal, doing healing for someone without becoming consumed by that person's wound. Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. And if there's a if there's a trigger in that person's wound that is affecting you in the same way as a healer, then in that way, heal that within yourself before you even approach doing healing for that person if it's if it affects you in a way it's just that what i'm trying to share with you be sober in your thoughts uh, don't fall into thought loops be aware that this is not a personal thing when you're doing healing for someone that you are feeling sick and that your empathic connection is somehow being hijacked by that person's injury. It's not personal. It is because of your energy. Energy seeks out energy. When there is something that happens that is extremely disturbing and distressing, say, whatever it is, and I don't want to give it any particular existence, it is important for you to realize that it is a commentary on man's inhumanity to man. It is not about politics, races, any of those things that, that come and stand out in your head. It's none of those things. It is man's inhumanity to man. It is the war on our morals that we need to work on. What I'm trying to tell you is, is it's the way that you are and it's the attack on that aspect but you can defend yourself and protect yourself by the way that you look at it it's what i'm trying to say so before you respond or react in a defensive manner and before you react in shock and any of those things that make you feel really shockingly in your heart and before you then think that you should rather just blind yourself and don't look blindfold it is important that you look and look at what it presents and how it presents itself to you again as i said if you need to help help if it happens around you and you cannot do anything about it do not let it consume you be aware of of it it is a scenario or a script that is playing itself out but it requires a viewer it requires a participant to feed into that energy okay now i am not saying murder and plunder and all of those things i'm not saying that that's a good thing at all it, it, it is not it is inhumane to do that it is something that is subhuman to do it is a primal thing to experience There are two faces, two, two sides to one face, excuse me. There are two sides to one face. One is peering into the reflection and experiencing the mirror effect, which is that platform or that water in which you create to observe yourself. The mirror, the expression will be reversed if you are looking at things with a dual nature, okay? As long as you believe in a dualistic frequency, there will always be two things happening at the same time. It'll be that way. It is important to note that as we are discussing this, that systematically we may be losing track of what was first and is the, uh, and in the, this observation, observing or believing what is it external, instead of knowing an internal observation or knowing 
and internal truth, a deep knowing which relates back to the heart of understanding, the heavens, the heart. When there is a balance between upper earth, middle earth and lower earth, but for one earth, the sun has already been replaced. There are certain beings emitting frequencies that affect us, manipulating our views so that we lose ourselves in our own reflections of our perceptions. So if you are in a dualistic manner, then you will be lost, you will feel lost in that reflection because you won't know what to go for. And then so there is a hijacking of your current electrical fiery heart, the water, the amno amniotic fluid that's hijacked so that you can't actually function an optimal level. So what is the opposite of duality? What is the difference between wholeness and oneness? Knowing the difference has a profound effect on your consciousness wherever you are going to go in your life. It is important to find and to know the difference between wholeness and oneness. Oneness is tied into what is mentioned, the singularity or hive frequency, and to get onto the bandwagon with the others to judge. Okay, but that's but to be even more specific, to react with masses, or to be one with, or to be one of something larger. So you are assimilated into that. Okay? You are not unique, you are just part of that. Okay? Oneness. Wholeness. Wholeness is to be whole, to not be broken, to be in harmony, and to be in a kind of unity within yourself. You have all of these heavens, and there, are, there is peace within all of these heavens. There will be peace within the heavens around you. The state of being unbroken or undamaged, and to know that you are whole means that you are not lacking and that you are in harmony. If it's difficult to feel whole, then look at things that you know you have completed. If you have not been able to complete things, then start. What keeps duality in motion? Energy in a state of flux, creating displacement of the self. You don't know where you go. Black, white, right, wrong, yes, no, good, evil, the rolling stone. I think because this, I'll do that, that's why I'll be that, that sort of thing. If you do this, you must be that, as an example. It could be the fundamental basis for primal existence, perhaps it might have come from a long time ago, when we all lived in tribes, where we had creeds and beliefs and followings. Energy of constant observation or of, 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 of looking at what we create all the time and just to check to see if it's right, you know, riding the, riding the bicycle just to check if someone's holding the, the chair, the bike for me, to keep looking back the whole time. Doubting yourself. Something that's also coming to my mind is the ego and where its function is within all of this, because it does come up. And I've noted that the ego um, uses the mirror of the reflected perceptions or the part of the personality. Sometimes it is referred to as the inner child. It exaggerates or devalues whatever it is that you're perceiving. It does either that or that. It's either there or down there, always in two streams, always in duality. I sometimes wonder why is it still called a child? Shouldn't it be an adult already? So when I look at this again in an alchemical process or an alchemical view, I'm seeing that the ego appears to be 
connected as a stream of consciousness that is somehow wired to a fight or flight response. Therefore, it is essential tool related to survivalism. The ego also does its best to keep you trapped in a particular reality. Okay, so can you imagine if you're in a fearful state, you'll be trapped in a fearful state of reality. Because that is how you look at things, with fear. So look at your ego um, and shift the focus and don't attack yourself. Appreciate that the ego assists in survival and preservation. Appreciate that, acknowledge that, look at yourself and say, I am all. And the ego won't have anything to feel it needs to protect or retaliate against. It is, after all, a part of your personality. But remember that the ego requires energy and that the need to see itself everywhere to feel secure is what it often seeks to experience. And this is why it promotes the idea of oneness to assimilate within a group of everybody else that we all look the same and then it's okay, we're safe. As long as we look the same, we're safe. We don't stand out. So therefore it performs its own survivalist frequency and sometimes this can also be hijacked by the way that you feel then. But only because you have experienced the need to survive that's why it still affects you. Because I can tell you for a fact I know that everyone has gone through this kind of survival thing. Whether you're from crib to, crib to crave to, to, to grave. The need to survive is something that's inherent in human existence and is often a tool that overrides the mind through fear and through conditioning. The constant bombardment that we're having every day. So I feel that it's important that we actually crack open these basements, these hidden basements and all these buildings. In other words, these towers that we are in, that we are live, have been living in, that we broke it, break it open and we flush it all out with water because that's where we're going towards right now. This is part of what we are requiring ourselves to do is to completely flush everything out so that we can become completely aware of our clearing and cleansing. We are experiencing a kind of water quake as opposed to earthquake, as opposed to whatever it is that quakes that needs to shake up the foundation. We are experiencing that right now. There are so many things that we are now questioning. You would like to achieve a transcendence of higher dimensional awareness no matter what level, 5D, 6D, 12D, whatever the case may be, wherever you want to go, you'd like to achieve that experience. If that is what you would like to achieve, you would always like to go forward and go up. And this is in human nature to do that. Then realize that all things are related to how you observe, because that is how you create your steps forward. And in the knowing of that. In this particular information that I'm sharing with you, it has somehow become apparent that when we dig deeper into this, we also would like to question morality. And so what is morality and what has it got to do with this particular process? Going back to the beginning, how you look at things challenges your morality. You either override it or you put yourself away. You, 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 you basically push yourself away from that specific situation within yourself. You don't want to deal with that. So, okay, that must be evil. So, there, nah, that is it. Principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong. That's what it means. That's what I've found in Wiki. Morality means the principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong. The underworld is being readdressed to bring up distortions of projections of each other and the readdressing 
of also something that's very, very intense and serious of sexual objectifying energy. And in that reference, objectifying means to degrade the status of an object. A, and it is normally has a sexual attitude that objectifies women. I've added onto this men and children and each other and yourselves, each other. Again, the survivalist thing comes in. What do we do when we objectify? We don't, do not only degrade the value of another, but we degrade ourselves in that process. Because what you are saying is that while you objectify in that particular situation, you objectify that element, you also degrade yourself to that level, to what you're degrading that thing to. It's the very fundamental root that we need to also address because morality does come up. So once you've shifted your awareness to something and looking at everything with a whole perspective, the whole sense of being, you will look at morals. It will come up for you to address. So I'm giving you I'm sharing with you this part going forward where you will address morals and you will see that morals are to be in harmony with oneself and others. Objectifying it means to degrade morals. Okay, again, duality. So, Objectification is in part the way the ego sees or perceives through you. This also brings in the absence of respect and false morality, bending the light, which now connects to the previous video that I made about the Narcons where morality inside of you is being manipulated so that you have a false idea or so that you that you don't live your that you, that you're not living in yourself anymore, but that that person is living through you, using your morals to feed him him it. Okay, and so who are you in essence, and where are you in the greater schema, or the nature of this beast that we are addressing? I'm kind of leaving this with you to think about. Perhaps it might have been a bit too intense. I think it was. I feel it was. That we need to discern when and where we are in relation to where we are going. I feel concerned that we need to be determining how we see and learn from what we know. That that is something fundamental. That we need to strive for truth. I feel that we are also whole and that, but that we have to move far from our, that, that we have to work to not, to, to bring ourselves back to our origins, that we come back to who we are. I feel that getting to know that we are functioning here in this world as conscious beings is something that we need to focus on more, more and more. It comes up because I feel we're in a very, very intense, specific place right now in terms of processing things. That we are that very element that we have been looking for. We are the event that we have been looking for, that we have been waiting for. We are that which we have been waiting for. And within ourselves that we are rising or rising up, rising our horizon in the way that we're looking at things to a higher level. We are literally going into a higher level of observation, of viewing, of experiencing. Horizon means that's that where the eyes are looking at. So 
event horizon is a higher level of looking at something. And so I feel it's important that we take note of how we look at things and how we how we perceive things and how we experience it and how we can strengthen ourselves through all of this and heal in this process so that we can actually go forward, go up and go into that direction. Thank you very much for your support and for your care and for your consideration and sharing. And I wish for you a very good time ahead. Until we connect again, I wish for you also all the best and much love to you all. Thank you. Bye.